Okay. Good. You guys still like uh, mm, red color, right? Red laser. Yeah. Let's use red laser. Yeah. Please, please unmute yourself once you join the Zoom. Okay. You guys can still hear me, right? And see my share screen. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Very good. Mm. If you have a question, please uh, feel free to shout out or put it in the chat. I can see the chat here, okay? So then I will answer you directly, yeah. Okay, good, good. So today we will complete the remaining mathematical review. And then in the next lecture, we will talk about the, talk about the direct method in the finite element. That's a very important concept in the finite element, okay? So um, before today's class, let's uh, uh, go through a few logistics updates and then to keep all of us on the same page, okay? So I have uploaded homework zero, homework one, and the homework one, I have the solutions on, uh, in the canvas also. So you don't need to submit these two homeworks. You use those uh, homeworks to practice and then um, get familiar with the style of the questions we will give in the in a future homework. And, and also the exam actually will be similar style, but it will be exam problem will be simpler than homework. Homework is more comprehensive, okay? So then you get familiar with the, those uh, problem styles. Then I believe you will do great in the, in the following all the exams, okay? Oh, I also put an example of quiz in the canvas. You can see the format of quiz. Quiz usually is simple, but very sharp to the point and to test whether you understand the concepts correctly or not, okay? So all those quiz, homework, and the exam are used for you, are designed for you to practice, to understand and strengthen your understanding, okay? So make sure you use them well. Don't feel any pressure. Use them to help your study, to give you a great learning experience, okay? So um, Monday, next Monday, it's a labor day, right? So Monday, we will not meet. I have the schedule here, let's see. Yeah, Monday, we will have, uh, we will, we will have the labor day, we don't meet. So next class we meet will be in the, on, on the Wednesday, okay? So, so before that, before that, um, today we will finish the mathematical review. And uh, also, uh, as I said before, we will have our guest lecture on September 26th. Okay, and we have a few other guest lecture also like to give the presentation in our class. I will sh I will share the schedule with you, and then we can we can uh, we can join their lectures. That would be great. They they will bring very new knowledge, very new research to the lab that's relevant to finite element, and will will introduce new topics that the finite element can can uh, tackle in the future. Okay, that would be very very exciting. Yeah. Okay. Good. So, and also the Epic tutorial I already uploaded in the canvas. You can start to, you, you, you don't need to watch that. We will have a class reserved for you to watch. And, uh, but you can keep a copy of all the videos and the PowerPoint slides. So uh, in the, after these three lecture, I post the three videos. After these three classes, then I will replace them with the new videos. So, because we have limited space in the, in the canvas, okay? So make sure, make a, uh, keep a copy from our own, okay? Mm. Very good. Previous uh, semester, the students did very well in the project after they watched the uh, five videos in total. And then they can do very nice project use the Epicus. And I, I also mentioned that for Epicus, we have an education version, but we only have limited uh, copies. So if we, you, you, I, I do encourage you form a group to study. Every group will use one education copy. You can download that from the, from the website. Talk to the IT people. Uh, we have an excellent IT, IT, um, IT support uh, staff member, Austin. His name is Austin. He will be able to help uh, with, uh, with the EPCAS uh, education copy. Okay. okay. And here is the schedule for this, this month. Okay. Okay. Let's get uh, started. Yeah. Also, I have showed you the nice video. Can you guys see my screen? Yeah, excellent. So I have shown you a nice video demonstrated the cell synchronization and the, the concept of a vector, right? Demonstrated, implied by this video. 
the force there. Yeah, this actually is minimized the most, uh, the smallest heart in the world, the smallest heart, only two cells, only two cells connected together, synchronized, and then they can sync, they can coordinately achieve some unique functions. And also, we, we received the email about the, the, the increasing, the increasing uh, um, issues, increasing cases of the COVID-19. So I hope uh, all of you be very, very careful, okay? Be very careful and uh, take a good care of yourself and make sure that you follow safety policy that the university, uh, university announced. Make sure to protect yourself. I don't want to see that any of you get, uh, get infected. I hope all of you are in great health so that uh, the, you can enjoy, enjoy our element class and then learn very well in this, in this subject because this subject is so important that uh, in the future, in the industry and academia, those uh, mathematical uh, engineering tools will be will tremendously helpful when you do the research, okay? So it will be very helpful when you, um, you design some experiment, you design some new structures, you use final element to prove it first, to calculate the first, okay? That is very useful. So I hope you all take, care of, take great care of yourself and then we can, we can have a, a very nice class in this semester, okay? Also, uh, I put the survey list of question here. Many of you emailed me back right after last class. That's excellent, that's excellent. Many questions and many uh, positive comments I received, that's great, that's great. So we will continue the style we have been using. And, uh, and uh, you feel free, let me know any part can be further improved or can be changed for you, okay? And then we will do that so that the whole class will satisfy all of you so that you all have a greater studying experience, okay? Okay, so here is the flow of the class we have, okay? So right now we are in the, in the mathematical review part and then we, um, right now we are in the middle of the mathematical review part and we, let's, uh, let's uh, complete the, the second half of mathematical review now. So <clears throat> in last lecture, <clears throat> we talked about the matrix, we talked about the determinant, we're talking about uh, how to convert a set of uh, equations into the multiplication of uh, matrix and uh, vectors, right? So let's briefly over go, go through it uh, together. So can you see my cursor? Can you see my red cursor? Red laser, can you see my red laser? And also, can you hear me? Yes, okay, thank you. Very good, very good. So you can see, <clears throat> If we have uh, a problem, we have a problem, that problem gives a set of equation if we want to solve that problem, okay? Those, that, that equation contains n unknowns from x1 up to xn, n unknowns. And then we can list n equations, n equations. As long as those equations are independent, means they, are not, they cannot be exchangeable to each other. If you multiply an equation with some constant or divide by some constant or add some, some values, add some values to both sides of the equation, then that equation is still the same equation. Even you change the form, but it's the same equation. That means the equation are not, not independent. What we are talking about here is all the independent equations. Equation and equation are different, okay? If that's the case, we will have n unknowns and n independent equations. In that case, these will give unique solution, unique solution of the n unknowns. And uh, this equation, we can convert this, uh, this uh, massive uh, writing n equations, we can convert that into one format that uses the matrix and the vector multiplied together. Just one, we, we convert that into one final general equation to express all those uh, uh, n equations, okay? The way to do that is uh, we extract all the constant value in front of unknown x1, x2, xn. Then we put that, we assemble that into the matrix form. So we will have uh, all the constant A written into the matrix form in, into our n by n matrix. First the n, first the n rows and then n columns. This n rows corresponding, all of them corresponding to 
the unknowns. It, uh, actually, I, what I mean is that every column, every column, this column, all corresponding to, all corresponding to one unknowns. Okay, all the columns, all the rows are corresponding to one equation. Okay, and then we we extract all the x unknown x, assemble them into a vertical vector. Here, x one to x n vertical vector. Assemble all the constant on the right hand side of the equation into another vertical vector b, b one to b n. Okay. Then these two, A and X, can multiply with each other. That equals to B. In that sense, we will have, we will have, let me join it. In that sense, we will have this one, this row times X column. When it ties with each other, we put it in this way, right? X dot. A dot X equals to B. When they multiply together, we use dot product. Then it will be A11 times X1 plus A12 times X2. And then plus, plus, plus up to plus A1N times Xn. Okay, that equals to B1, right? That's what I'm saying that the, the whole, the row is corresponding to one equation. This row times this vector equals to B1. That is one equation which is uh, this equation, okay? So that also means this, the, the subscript one, 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 two, one, and first, first index one actually means the equation, metric equation one. So this is equation one, okay? Second, second um, index one, two, three, two up to n, they are corresponding to the variable x1, x2, xn, okay? So that's the, the thing you need to be very, very clear in the mind. And this will avoid you to make any, any mistakes, okay? And then following the same rule, we can have uh, A2. This is the second rule. Dot product again with the X vector, unknown vector. And then that will equal to B2, okay? So here, first, first index changes two, 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 right? That means it's the second equation. It's this one, this equation. Can you guys see my drawing on the, on the board? Can you see it? Yes, yes, okay, excellent, excellent. The second equation, okay? So, and then the, the second index still corresponding to different unknowns, okay? And so on. Then you can go through the other different equations. That's the way the matrix and the matrix and the vectors multiply together, getting to the, the, to the state that they will represent a set of independent equations, okay? So we need to be very familiar with this way, okay? And they can be written in this format, in the A times X equals to B format, okay? And then remember, a and X, B, they are different tensors. They are matrix, they are vectors, they are vectors, and so that they are all bolded, but they have different, uh, different enclosure, right? Some are branched, some are branches. So that's the convention of our class. You just follow this convention, and then, and then the things become much, much, uh, much, much smoother, okay? So to, to, solve, to solve all those unknowns, we can, we, we first need to know that uh, whether, whether, those, uh, uh, whether those matrix, this, a, this con uh, constant, whether they are singular or not. Singular means the determinant of this, this matrix is zero. If that's the case, that means those equations actually, actually will degenerate. You will not get a unique solution. If they are not, if they are not a singular, means they have a non-zero determ determinant then you actually can, you have those independent equations. You can get the unique solution of all those unknown axes, okay? So you will, you, you will see it in the next few slides. And once, once, the, once this A is not a singular, means it has a determinant, non-zero determinant, okay? Then 
we can also calculate the A inverse. Remember the, the way we discussed the how to calculate inverse, right? So you, and, and the way to denote the inverse is to have the minus one as a superscript for the matrix, okay? So then this, this value, this inverse exists. In that case, you can multiply this inverse matrix at both sides of the, of the equation. Of this, uh, um, of this reduced equation, okay? And then you multiply from here, A minus one, A times together, it becomes an identity matrix. On the right-hand side, you have A minus one times B. Then this one, what is this? A minus one, A inverse is still a matrix. B is a vector. And then they multiply together will give a new vector. This new vector actually is this one. I times X is X, is actually the unknown. So that's the way you can calculate the unknowns. You multiply the inverse of this constant matrix to the, the right hand side, the vector constant. Okay. And then you get you will find the unknown of X. You will do it repeat it again and again in the future class. And then in the future, when we talk the finite element the, uh, matrix assembling, here you will find that some of the X here are zero, some of the X are zero, some of the B are zero. So of the B are zero. And then in that case, you can actually reassemble the matrix and you can take a subset of the matrix that contains subset of B. Then you calculate the unknown in that subset. Once you've done that, you put the, the results back and then to rearrange the remaining matrix. And then you can use this method again to find the remaining unknowns, okay? So th th this is a very fundamental and very, very useful. So, Okay, so another important uh, concept in the matrix operation is the eigenvalue, eigenvalue. So what is eigenvalue? Eigenvalue is, uh, we know, can you guys hear me? Can you guys hear me? Yeah, excellent, excellent. We know that a matrix times vector equals to a vector, right? Matrix times vector is a vector, but that vector, new vector, may not be in the same direction as the previous vector. We said a vector has two really important properties. One is direction, one is magnitude, right? After you multiply matrix with the vector, you get a new vector. That new vector may not have the same direction as the previous vector. But there are certain cases, the, the certain case that uh, the new vector generated actually is in the same direction of the, of the matrix, such as this. You have A matrix times X vector. The results actually is uh, that the same vector times a, a constant lambda, okay? Times a constant lambda. This is beautiful. This is beautiful. What does this mean? This means if you have a matrix there, you times a vector with it, you will get the same vector, but magnify this vector or shrink this vector or without a change of the vector, okay? If the A is the identity matrix, then you don't change the X. That means this matrix actually play a form to, to change the size of this vector, but don't change its direction. That's a really unique property of the matrix. And in this case, once you, once, once you have a matrix here, once you have a matrix that has some unique property that you multiply with different vectors and they give you the same vector, but with different magnification or different, different shrinkages, this vector, is called the eigenvector of this matrix. This shrinkage or max, uh, magnification factor lambda is called the eigenvalue of this vector, of this vector. Eigenvalue and eigenvector are associated together. They are together. And different, and each matrix, each matrix, they may have different eigenvectors and eigenvalues, okay? Different pairs of that, yeah. Usually if in the 2D, 2D matrix, Two by two, you have two eigenvectors and they have associated two eigenvalues. If it's a 3D, you have a three eigenvectors and associated three eigenvalues and so on, okay? So if we are given this kind of uh, um, equation, how can we solve it? How can we solve the eigenvalue, eigenvector, right? So the way to solve is actually standardized. People have a, and derive the way to solve it. Here, let's go through the standard method and then we will take an example to, to do it together, okay? 
So if I have this one, if I have this one, so matrix I already know what is the value inside. I already know what I don't know is the eigenvector. I don't know what eigenvalue. I don't know that. I don't know. I want to find out the, a given matrix. What's their eigenvector and eigenvalue? Now to do that, I write this form and I move this guy back, move the right hand side back to the left hand side. Then we have this. We have uh, these two terms minus each other equal to zero, right? And then I can extract x, extract x. And then because this is a constant lambda, it's a scalar. Then to make this scalar to be matching with the matrix, we time, we time this uh, constant with scalar with the identity matrix. Then they are in the same order, right? If A is two by two, matrix identity matrix is also two by two and so on, okay? So then in this case, uh, we have a matrix times the unknown vector equal to zero. And if, if this X can go from different direction and go many, many different direction, okay? And, uh, and still make this, uh, this multiplication equal to zero, then this X actually is the value, is, is, the, is, the, the, is the corresponding eigenvector for the A, okay? So then the problem comes, how can we calculate this X? How can we find it? There's a one solution, very obvious. If the X equal to zero, then zero times anything equal to zero, right? However, that is a trivial solution because we are not interested in the zero. We're interested in some non-zero vector that indeed existing have both direction and the magnitude, okay? So we, we cannot take X equal zero as our solution. So then, to, when, then when we look at this, uh, look at this equation, we will find here the unknown is, lambda is unknown, x is unknown, right? But this x is changing. They change to different directions, change to different values, and still have uh, the whole multiplication equal to zero. That implies something, that implies something. That implies uh, this is an equation set, as we discussed earlier. It's the equation set, many, many equations. Right? This equation always give to zero. And this, what this means is this determinant, because X cannot be zero. This means this matrix, the determinant equal to zero. This determinant equal to zero, okay? Once this determinant equal to zero, this times the vector is equal to zero. So then we can calculate the determinant of this matrix. That is the A minus lambda I, we take the determinant equal to zero, right? We know the constant inside the A, we don't know lambda, but we know identity matrix, we already know. Then this actually will give us multiple, multiple, uh, multi, uh, give us a new matrix contains unknown lambda. And then we use the same way we calculate the determinant to write down the equation of this as a function of lambda, okay? So then we can, we can, we can see here. Then we can, we can see it can be written in this way. Is the matrix A minus lambda identity. And the identity only has a non-zero value in the diagonal. So that all minus lambda, one times lambda, all like this. And then we take a derivative, uh, take, take the uh, determinant. And then this the determinant will become a scalar, right? It, and here it become a one expression. So then this guy would, would be written like this, okay? Here I write a C1, Cn. This is actually a compound constant. This constant contain different combination of A. In fact, we just write it in an equation of a lambda, right? And C1, Cn, those are all constants. They are the combination of the A constant, okay? This is a well known. You, in the book, in the book, we already have the complete explanation, complete um, the, the elaboration of all those constants. You can take a look at the appendix, okay? In that final element book, we, we suggest that we recommend the textbook. Now, once we have this, once we have this, we can calculate, we can calculate a, a lambda, okay? We get a lambda. And then we can put a lambda back. We can put a lambda back into this equation. We will have, you see, have a lambda n, right? That means we can have an n rot of lambda. We will have an n lambda, n, num n numbers of lambda. They are all different and can be, some can be the same. Once we have the lambda value, the that value, we put it back to this uh, original equation. Then, only unknown is x now. Only unknown is x. 
then we can calculate x. Here, we will have uh, n, n number of x, n number of equations. We will get a unique solution of the x. That is the, the, that is the eigenvector corresponding to that lambda. And then you have a different lambda you put in, get a different uh, eigenvectors, okay? So that's actually the way to calculate, uh, calculate, the, <coughs> calculate the, the results, the, the eigenvector and eigenvalue. Now, we can go through our example together. So then we can have a more, uh, more deeper impression. Now, if we are given, if one matrix is given here, this matrix, it is a three by three matrix, okay? And then the, 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 it asks us to determine its eigenvalues and eigenvectors, okay? So then we can use the same, same way we can do. Okay, so we first uh, write it uh, in this equation, in terms of this equation, in terms of this equation. Okay, we write it this way. And then we move right hand side to the left hand side. We form this kind of equation. And then we calculate, we make determinant of this term equal to zero. And then we calculate the lambda. And then once we get a lambda, we put a lambda back to this equation to calculate the vector. Okay, let's go through it together. Now we have this. Uh, this matrix now, we, we take the determinant of the form we just showed, make this equal to zero. When we do this, when we calculate this, we will get this equation, okay? When we result it, it gives us this equation, three minus lambda and a long, uh, another, um, uh, another uh, polynomial equations, uh, expression. This expression can also be uh, expressed as a lambda minus six, times lambda minus one. And then it times three minus lambda, eventually equal to zero. So three turns multiplied together, each turn contains lambda, okay? In this case, it means lambda, lambda has three roots. It can be three, it can be six, it can be one. All of them can make the final results equal to zero. So you have three roots, that's correct. You cannot have four rows or two rows because this is a three by three matrix, okay? So now from here, here, we know that the eigenvalue of, the, of this matrix is a six, three, one. Now we can put each one back. We can put each one back into the matrix. The way to do is uh, we, will, we, we firstly, firstly, we have the X vector, right? X vector there. We can first assume, we can first use uh, the direction, unit direction of that X vector means the, the, we don't care about the magnitude now. We only care about the direction. The direction is very important here. We first put a direction here. That the direction of that eigenvector is n1, n2, n3, three scalars assembled into one vector. Okay, we put it this way. And then we can, and then we can, we can start to put the lambda in, calculate the corresponding n number. Okay, here, because we are talking about a unit vector, then they, it implies another equation. That is all this, uh, all this n together, this new unit vector, they are magnitude equal to one. So then we, we take the magnitude of n equal to one, that gives the n one, here I write n one one, actually it's n one, n one square plus n two square plus n three square. Take the square root that equal to one, okay? So this is a new equation that implied when we use this uh, unit vector to express it. If you don't use the unit vector, it's also fine. You can also calculate, okay? You can also get the same results. Now, if n equal to six, if n equal to six, we put the first item values in, then what we will have is n equal to six here. Then this row times this column equal to zero. Then it will give us one equation. Second row times this column give a second equation. Third row, Times, times this rule equal to zero, give the third equation, okay? So then we have three equations, three unknowns. From here, we know that you see N3 equal to zero. N1 and N2, actually, they have a relationship here. They equals to, equals to um, uh, the N2 is half of N1. In the first equation, also it, uh, also it tells us, if you move it, also it tells us N1 and N2, has this relationship, N1 is twice of N2, right? So now all it tells us is 
N1 and N2 has a relation, N3 is zero. Then N1 and N2, we still don't know. To solve that, you use this equation, magnitude of the N equal to one. Then you put N1 and N2 into this, put it into, and N3 equal to zero. Then it equal to one, right? So it will tell us N1 is actually two, equal to either positive two divided by square root of five or negative two divided by square root of five. And N2 is half of it. N2 is half of it, okay? Both have the same sign, both have the same sign, okay? Can you guys uh, follow me? Yes, okay, excellent, excellent, very good. So this is very simple, very simple, but fundamentally super important. You need, when you do the calculation, I do suggest you repeat the calculation I just show you by yourself, see whether you can get the same results, okay? Now here, what does it mean? This means from these results, we will get N1 has two value, N2 has two value, N3 equals zero. N3 equals zero means Z equals zero, Z equals zero, right? So that means this vector N actually is on the X, Y plane. They have a zero Z components. And also this positive and negative sign tells us the direction can be either in one direction or in the positive, in the opposite direction. Either way is fine. This is accurate. This is the complete solution. This is accurate. And uh, you, if you put a different eigenvalue in, you will get the same results. Every time you will get a two eigenvalue in the opposite direction. So then you eventually three eigenvalue, you get a six eigenvector. That's correct. Because they are the, the, the these results just tell you two directions. But uh, which direction you use depends on your right hand uh, principle. You select only one. Only one is sufficient. And then in, in the three, three three pairs, you select one each, then you have only three results. And then these three eigenvectors form the right-hand coordinate, okay? The, the, the three of them are unique solutions. Okay, so now, yeah, as I write, N1 can be written in this way, right? Plus minus two divided by square root of five, and N2 is half of it, and a positive and negative. So when you, uh, when you calculate, it's very important that you write the complete solution there. And then if n if lambda equal to three, the second the second uh, eigenvalues, then we can get an other new equation set when we put that into this formula, right? Then we get a second set of equation. And then we can calculate n2 equals to plus zero zero plus minus one. What does this mean? This means n2 is around the z direction either positive Z or negative Z. That is making sense. As we said, the first eigenvector is on the X, Y. If the first vector is on the X, Y plane, second one is around the Z, then these two are perpendicular to each other, okay? I saw a question from Thomas, how to get the, how to get the two divided by square root of five. The way to do is you see here, Thomas, you hear me? Thomas. Yes, I hear you. Yeah, you see, I have N1, and uh, I also know N1 equal to N2, right? So I put N1 here, that's N1 square. Here is N2, I put a two N2 here. Uh, uh, no, this is N1, N1, I can put N1 here as a two N2, two N2 square, right? That becomes a four N2 square, right? And then here I have N2 square. Here I have zero. So four N2 square plus, plus uh, N2 square equals five N2 square, right? Five N2 square. Then five N2 square. You hear me? You follow me? Yeah, I see now. Thank you. Excellent, excellent. And then we can also, once we get N2, we can put it back to, the, to find out the N1, okay? So Tan has a question. If we do not assume unit vector, do we just write the eigenvalue as 2t, t0, t where t is an arbitrary constant? You can do that as well. Yeah, you can do that as well. That's fine. That's actually the same results. Very good, very good. So for the n lambda n e to the three, as I said, you will, will get a new equation set, right? New equation set. That will give us uh, the new uh, eigenvectors. And then finally, for the eigenvalue equal to one, we can also get the equation set, also get that. And then it will give us the, the, the N3 value. 
Here you see N3 value is a post negative, post negative, positive, positive negative. Because in this equation, we have N1 and N2. They are in different uh, opposite signs. Okay. So then we write it, we can get these results. This implies that for the N3, they are also on the XY plane. They do not have a Z component. So eventually, let me see. Eventually, what it will have is, uh, we will have, uh, can you guys see my drawing? Yes, very good. Good. So we will have an uh, X, Y, Z in the plan. Now, now, remember previous one, previous one, the X and the Y, they have the value positive, they, they have positive and negative, and they are one and two, right? So if it's positive, all positive, it is this direction on one. It also has a opposite direction, right? So it's going like that way, it's also fine. Now, for the N2, what we have is uh, around the Z direction, you need a vector N2, okay? And also you see positive and negative means that this N2 can have, uh, can have uh, opposite direction as well. Both are applicable, but we only choose one eventually, okay? And then N3, you see negative and positive, negative and positive. That means in the X direction is negative. It's this way. And the Y direction is positive. Here, Y is positive, right? So we, what we have is actually this one. It's this way. Here is a negative X. Here is positive Y, right? Then, we have here is N3, N3. It's also on the X, Y plane. And then this one also, if it's a positive and negative, you can see in the X direction, it's the positive. In the Y direction, it's negative. Here, Y is negative. Here, X is positive, right? So this tells us that uh, we can either select uh, this set, this set, N2, N1, and three, we can, these three actually form, they are mutually perpendicular to each other, mutually perpendicular to each other, okay? And they follow the, follow the, 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 the right-hand principle. If they are not, you can select it. And the, if the, for the dashed line, dashed line, they are also mutually perpendicular to each other, okay? So that's the, that's the, that if you calculate, calculate, all the eigenvectors, and you draw like I just drawn there, and you find that they are mutually uh, perpendicular to each other. That means your solution is accurate, as accurate. Okay, and you already know you you have solved the direction of eigenvectors now, which is super important. Okay. Can you see my screen? Can you see my screen? Yeah, excellent, excellent. Now, that's the procedure, how we can calculate uh, the eigenvalues for a matrix, for a three by three matrix. And then from that matrix, from that uh, matrix and the eigenvalues, how can we calculate their corresponding eigenvectors? Here is N1, N2, and N3. Those are eigenvectors. I, the, the magnitude, the magnitude of eigenvectors is not that important. What you really want to know is the eigenvectors uh, direction. Because the magnitude, uh, no matter how it is, is all, it, they all get to a zero value. That's here. They all get to here. No matter, no matter how you add this value here, it, how, how you add the magnitude here, the final result is always zero. So that value can be any number, non-zero number. Can always get it to zero. Okay, so most important is you find n one, n two, n three, telling us the direction. Very good. Very good. Yeah. Let me know if you have questions. Okay. So once we know, 
how to calculate those eigenvalues and eigenvectors? Now, actually, the, the, we will appreciate it has a, it has a physical meaning. So, in the in the solid mechanics, we already learned that uh, we can have a stress and a strain matrix, two D uh, three D tensors, right? So, you see, here is a uh, here is a body. Here is a uh, body. That, uh, that is an object experiencing some external force and external some boundary conditions. When they are under the external force, inside of the body, they will generate the stress. That stress can be, can be categorized by a three by three tensor. So we can take out a small element from this body. It has uh, six faces, six faces. And on each face, they can in, in, they can experience some force, right? And because this body is in the equilibrium, so even we take out a small element, this small element is still in equilibrium. That means force in the opposite surface, in the opposite direction, they equal to each other in terms of magnitude, opposite in the direction, and then they can be in, in equilibrium, right? In that case, face, the any face, like a front face and a back face, they are actually equivalent, equivalent to each other. Left face, left hand side face, right hand side face, equivalent to each other. Top face and, and the bottom face, equivalent to each other. So then we only need to care, care about uh, one face because the other face is equivalent, just change the sign. Then we only have three independent face, right? We can do it like a right hand side, from the front face, right hand side face, front face or bottom face, just use three. The other three is the equilibrium. In that three faces, each face, you have a three direction force, right? Force can be dissolved into three direction because we are in a 3D space, X and Y and Z. Then in each, each face, you have a three direction force. That force can be normalized by the area of the face so that we will not just talk about the force, but also the force intensity, force intensity, with respect to the area, right? Then we have, a, that actually is the, the, term, the, the definition of the stress. Then eventually on each face, we have a three stress in three directions. And we have three faces, so we have nine stress, nine stresses. That nine stresses can be written in this way, in this matrix, three by three matrix. Stress, usually we call it the sigma, sigma, okay? Normal stress sigma. The shear stress we usually call it tau, okay. But uh, but uh, uh, either way, if you can also call it a sigma as well. In this way, we have a sigma x x, sigma x y, sigma x z. They are all in the. They are all in the. Um, let me see. They are all in the x x plan, x plan, one plan, and then x y and z denote the direction. Okay and so on, three surface, and in each surface, three directions. Now, this is a, a matrix. We can calculate the, the eigenvector and eigenvalue of this matrix as well. What it means is, what it means is we multiply this matrix with a vector. Then it will give us a, a new vector. Then a new vector is the magnification or shrinkage of the previous vector. This has a special physical meaning. In the solid mechanics, if you want to know, if you have this, uh, uh, if you have this uh, element, you if you know the stress state represented by this nine element matrix, you can actually know what's the force on any surface go uh, go through, cut through this element. You can know that uh, that uh, the force on that surface, that force is called traction, traction. Okay, so to calculate the attraction. You need to know that a surface is a normal direction. Normal direction is represented by a vector. Once you know that the direction of the surface, you multiply stress state with that vector. Then you will get a new, ve new vector. That vector is showing the force on that surface. If eigenvector existing in this uh, in this uh, um, in this uh, matrix, that means if you in this uh, in this small element, if you make a cut, make a cut, get a new surface, and the normal vector of that new surface is equal to the eigenvector, then you will get the traction force on that surface 
along the same direction of the eigenvector, of the normal vector of that surface. That means on that surface, the force is normal to the surface. You don't have a shear force, you only have a normal force. That is very interesting, okay? That's very interesting. That is similar to the case that you put a ball, put a ball into the water, into water, deeper into the lake. That ball is experiencing pressure. That pressure has no shear. All the pressure is normal, right? No shear. So means if you have a vector, if you have a, a, a matrix stress state, you can rotate, you can rotate that, uh, that uh, element to certain orientation. That uh, vector, that, that element is experiencing the same shear, uh, same normal pressure, like, a, like it is inside the water, inside the, inside, in the deep bottom of a lake, okay? So no shear component, only normal. That's super interesting. So when you do that, when you do that, you can uh, calculate uh, the eigenvector of this uh, uh, stress state. And then you will get three, three of them. And then use that three of them, you can multiply back to the, the, to the um, stress state. And then you will, you will reformat stress state to this format. You only have the stress, normal stress around the diagonal. You will not have shear stress in the off diagonal positions. Okay, so this is in the, in the, in the Hydrotic, hydrotic pressure case, okay? These uh, three values are not necessarily the same. They can be different, they can be different, okay? In the water is the same, but uh, in, in the different cases, they can, can be different. Okay, so that's the eigenvalue, eigen, um, eigen um, vector problem, super useful. Now, another important concept we want to know is a quadratic form. Can you guys hear me? Excellent, excellent. Let me know if you want me to go quicker, I can do very quick. Or you want me to go slow down, I can also slow down to, to re-explain to you, that's fine, okay? Let me know your feedback. Okay, for, for the quadratic form, this will be commonly used when you calculate the finite element uh, computation. Quadratic form is actually the, the, the means all the unknowns are uh, in the in the, uh, are the quadratic function in the in the equation. For example, if we have f, uh, this is a scalar scalar f capital F, it equals to a one one times x one square plus a two two times x two square, and then plus plus all the way up to here. This equation seems very complicated. They have a lot of unknowns, and they un some of the unknowns are in in the singular form and multiply with another another unknown, or some of them actually is in the uh, qu uh, quadratic form by itself, right? So this seems very really complicated, but in fact, this is a very common format you will encounter in the finite element because this equation actually represents if we have a, a constant, uh, um, constant matrix times unknown, unknown vector x, unknown vector on the right hand side, and the transpose of unknown on the left hand side. Remember, remember the transpose is the one times n dimension, right? And the x is the n times the one dimension, right? So eventually, this uh, multiply together become one by one. That, that is a scalar. That is the scalar f here. Okay. So this is actually very co convenient way to this. Uh, this, this is a very convenient way to summarize this uh, quadratic form equation. And then this one, you can write in this abbreviation form, or you can write it in this uh, elaborated matrix and vector form. And you also you can write it in terms of uh, in terms of the summary. Algebraic form, okay? Summary, n i equal to one to n, j equal to one to n, and then a i j times x i j. i and j are summarized, um, i and j are summarized respectively, okay? Then if you 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 can you uh, want to explicitly write this, then you get this format, this beautiful format now, okay? Now, okay, right now it's a 140. We can stop here and we can continue to talk about for the more exciting mathematical review. And then we get, get it directed to the direct method on the Wednesday, okay? Very good, very good. Thank you guys, very good.